Okay, so this week we're going to be taking a look at a technique of Bert Monroy, and we're going to be creating a brick wall from scratch. So we're going to start with a new document, 10 inches by 10 inches at 300 pixels per inch, and we're going to be taking a look at the preferences in Photoshop, so we can set up some guides in there. So we're going to pop into Photoshop, we're going to go under File, New, 10 inches by 10 inches at 300 pixels per inch, and I'll hit Create. Now, under Photoshop, Preferences, and if you're on Windows, it might be somewhere different, but let's pop down to Guides, Grids, and Slices. Now, yours might be something different. Mine are set to a grid line every one inch with eight subdivisions. We're gonna need to set it to a grid line every one inch with 11 subdivisions. Now, this can be handy if you're you know, laying out a room, maybe you're moving and you know the size of a room you want to move your furniture into. If you set a grid line to every one inch with 12 subdivisions, you can set it that on your document, every one inch equals one foot and every subdivision equals one inch. Now, in this case, I've got 11 subdivisions, but uh, that's one of the things you can use these grid lines for, kind of measuring stuff out. Uh, I'm going to hit OK. And if I turn those grids on, if I go under View, Show, there's the grid or command apostrophe can turn those grids on. Command apostrophe on, off, makes them visible or not visible. And if I zoom in a little bit, let's just zoom in a bit, there are those 11, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 subdivisions. Cool. Let's take a look at what the instructions are telling us here. View, show grid, create a new layer and zoom in so that one grid takes up the entire screen. So we're gonna create a new layer at the bottom of our layers panel. There's that little plus icon, new transparent layer and zoom in so that one of these squares takes up the entire screen. We wanna be nice and precise about this. We're gonna be creating a pattern out of these bricks and if they're misaligned by even a single pixel, you'll see a slight jaggedness in the finished result. So we're gonna zoom in so we see one grid taking up the entire screen. We're going to grab our marquee tool. Uh, that's a crop tool. You're going to grab our marquee tool. If you hit M on the keyboard, there's your marquee tool. And we're going to select an entire grid and four little subdivisions down. So we're going to start at the top, click and a drag. Now the nice thing about the marquee tool is it will snap to these little guides. Like if I don't quite get into the corner there, you'll notice that, ah, it snapped anyway. It started right in the corner. If you're too far off, it'll snap to the wrong Thing, but as long as you're within this area, it'll snap. We can drag all the way across an entire grid and then down four subdivisions. Now you'll see mine went a little bit low. That's okay. Because of the resolution of this document, 300 pixels per inch, a pixel in the document isn't necessarily going to end up exactly on that line there, but that's okay. We've got four by 11 of these little subdivisions here. Let's take a look at the next instructions. We're gonna create a new layer and fill this selection with color. What color? Well, some kind of a brick color. All right, let's make a new layer. I already have a new layer. Oh, I'll use this one. I'm gonna go under Edit, Fill, and for contents, I'm gonna choose Color. And it'll ask, well, what color do you want? I'm gonna use my color picker to pick a bricky sort of color. Brickish, briquette, I don't know, bricky color, a brick color red, red brick. There we go. Hit OK. And I will hit OK again, and that fills it with that red brick color. Cool. Now, I'm going to get rid of these marching ants. Select, deselect. We'll get rid of those marching ants, or Command D is the keyboard shortcut to get rid of that. Now, this is my first brick. I'm going to make more bricks. I'm going to make a duplicate of this brick, grab the layer, drag it down onto the new layer icon, and that'll make a copy of it. Another way you could do it is with the Command J or Control J if you're on Windows. That'll make a duplicate of this brick. And with the Move tool, this little fella right here, I can grab this brick and I can drag it over. Now, careful, notice it can snap a little above. Notice that little sharp edge there and sharp edge down there. We want to make sure that it lines up with the original brick. Now, if you want to make sure something moves perfectly horizontally, if you hold the Shift key, if you click, hold Shift, and drag, it doesn't matter if you go up and down a little bit, it'll constrain it to the horizontal direction. So now I know that it's the exact same height as the original. So you could simply grab it, drag it over, and eyeball it so that it lines up down there. And I think I've got it pretty good there. Or you can click, hold the shift key 
and know that it's going to go perfectly horizontally and move it over until it lines up with this edge here. So now I have two bricks. If I zoom out a little bit, yay, two bricks. Let's take a look at our instructions. Create the following pattern. What's he got here? There's that first brick that we made. I duplicated it, dragged it over to here. And it looks like this same two brick pattern duplicated a couple more times, one place down here and one place down here. Now I could duplicate this brick, put it here, duplicate it again, put it here, duplicate it again, put it here. But I've already got this pattern of two bricks. So what if I just merge those two bricks and duplicate that merged copy? What if I were to click on the top layer here, shift click on the bottom layer, and right click and merge those layers together. Now you don't have to right click, you could also go to this little pop up over here and choose merge layers and those get merged into a single layer that has these two bricks. And if I duplicate this layer, I can grab this single brick and they're going to move together. Now let's take a look at the instructions and see exactly where this has to go. It looks like there's one subdivision space in between and one, two, three, four, five, six on this side and it takes up one, two, three, four, five. Remember there's 11 across so we'll leave six blank and we'll let it take up five. So leave one blank in between and move it over until there's five of it before this edge of the subdivision there. Alright, so I've moved it down. There's that one space in between and one, two, three, four, five. So I'll move this until it comes to here, one, two, three, four, five, and there's that subdivision. Cool, does that look right? It does. All right, now let's take a look at this bottom row here. Basically this duplicated, moved down, right up against the edge with one line of the bricks kind of popping up over the top of that guideline there. All right, let's make a duplicate again. Again, you could do a simple Control or Command J to make the duplicate. You can see that it duplicated that layer there. Grab this duplicate, drag it down so that it is one line sticking up, three lines below, and that looks like that should do it. Cool! Does this look exactly like the instructions here? It does. All right, what is next? With the marquee tool, select the bricks below. Now this is interesting. Notice here there's a white background, and notice here there's the transparent background. What do the instructions say? Make sure the <gasps> background is not visible. Let's pop into Photoshop here and let's turn off the eyeball on the background. The reason we need to do that is because we're going to be defining a pattern and if this white layer was turned on it would become part of the pattern. We'd have a pattern of bricks with white in between. Ultimately we want to have a transparent area between the bricks. If we had this layer turned on, that white, those white pixels would actually become part of that background in there. So I'm going to turn this layer off so we have transparent in between the bricks. All right. Make sure the background is not visible. Define as a pattern. Well, I guess I should make that selection first. Make a selection as below. It looks like this. So it looks like we have a half height of this top brick selected, a half height of the bottom brick selected, all of this middle brick except for one row showing and none of this brick except for one row selected. All right, so halfway between the top and bottom bricks, one row not selected of this brick and one row of this brick selected. Let's pop back into Photoshop here. Let's grab our marquee tool or M on the keyboard. So I wanna not select this row here. So I'll go halfway down this top row and here, and that will exclude one section of that brick. Click and drag. And I want to include one section of this brick here and go all the way down until I have half of this brick selected. So halfway through this brick, halfway through this brick, the bottom half of this brick, the top half of this brick, there's one selected, there's one not selected. Cool. Make sure the background is not visible. We've already turned that off. Define as a pattern. So much like when we were making custom brushes, we defined a custom brush. Under this, we'll choose Edit Define Pattern. And I'm gonna call mine something creative like uh, bricks. There we go. Hit OK. I have defined a pattern. Now, what are we gonna do with this pattern? 
deselect, create a new layer, and fill it with the pattern of bricks. Deselect, that would be a command D or under select, deselect, make a new layer and fill it, edit, fill, with the pattern of bricks. So for the contents, we'll choose pattern and hit OK. And if we zoom out, there's our brick wall. Now, there's a couple things we don't need. We don't need our guides anymore. So we can go under view, show, guides, or we could command semicolon, turn them off. Actually, it's our grid we don't need. Command apostrophe, we can turn off our grid. And we don't need these bricks down here. Those are just kind of messing up in the center there. So we'll turn those off as well. Technically, we don't need those at all, but we won't throw them out just yet. I like to keep as many things as possible just in case, you know, things go tragically wrong. Make a new layer and fill it with a pattern of bricks. We did that. Create a new layer for the grout and fill it with a color, a grout color, uh, which I'm guessing would be kind of a gray sort of color. Use the add noise filter in monochromatic mode to give the grout texture and make sure the grout layer is underneath the brick layer. All right, let's do this. I'm going to make a new transparent layer and it's never a bad idea to name your layers as you go. So I'm actually going to call this one grout and I'm going to call this one bricks. And yeah, for cleanliness sake, maybe I'll put these guys into a folder. So I'll click on the top one, hold down the shift key, select on the bottom one. They are all selected. And I could click the folder icon here, or as Photoshop calls it, a group. Uh, or I could simply right click and choose group. What? Oh, it doesn't give me the option of group from layers because this background layer is locked. By unlocking it and then shift clicking to select all of them, I can now right click and group yeah, from layers. And I'll call this yeah, stuff I probably don't need, but you never know. There we go. Now this grout is going to have to be below the bricks because that's where grout belongs. Oh, I need to turn the eyeball off on this one here. Actually, I don't technically need to, but I'll turn it off anyway. The grout lives below the bricks and I'm going to fill it with a grouty sort of color. Edit, fill, and for contents, I'll go to color again and I will choose, geez, what color is grout even? Well, I'm guessing it has no saturation. So all the way to the left here, some kind of a grayish sort of color. Sure, that's grout. Hit OK and I will hit OK. Now the instruction said to add some noise. You might have noticed if you zoom in on a digital photograph, it's got kind of a, a rough texture to it, a little bit of a, a, almost like grain. They called it grain back in the days of film. Nowadays we call it noise in the digital world. So I'm going to add some noise under filter, noise, add noise. And this will just give it that kind of sandy texture, almost look like, you know, concrete or something in between there. And now it did say monochromatic. Without the monochromatic, notice we get these kind of color patches in here. Uh, if we were to look at the individual channels, each one is slightly different in the noise pattern. Now, if we add that noise, filter, noise, add noise, with monochromatic, mono meaning one, chroma meaning color, we've only got one color in here. It's a very neutral sort of look. And if we look at the noise in the channels now, each channel has the exact same noise added to it. That's why there's no color showing in the noise. And that just looks more natural, like a cement sort of look. Cool. What's next? We added the noise to the grout, noise to the bricks, and a drop shadow using layer styles. Our bricks, yes, they look too smooth, don't they? If you touch a brick, it's got a really rough sort of texture to it. So let's pop onto our bricks layer here and let's give it some noise as well. Filter, noise, add noise, and how much do I want to give it? I don't want it too rough. I don't want to hurt myself. Yeah, something around there. And we'll hit OK. And a drop shadow. Right now, it kind of looks like they're painted onto the exact same layer there. So I'm going to go under Effects or Layer Styles. And I'm going to hit it with a drop shadow. Look at what's happening. Now, when you're adding the drop shadow, you can play with the angle. This is the angle that the light is shining on it from. Here it's shining from the bottom. Here it's shining from the top. We can play with the distance. Or if you wanted to combine the angle and the distance in one motion, you can just click in the image and you can drag that shadow around as you see fit. So I'm going to do something like that. You play around with the spread of it. There we go. It's a sunny day. All right, and I will hit 
okay. And there are my bricks with the light shining down across them. Now they're all fairly similar. One of the things bricks tend to have in common is, is well, they're random. Uh, we added a drop shot using layer style. Set the burn and dodge tool to the height of a brick and dab random bricks. All of the ones we've made are exactly the same brightness, but if you ever look at an actual brick wall, you'll see that some are lighter, some are darker. Well, let's just do some non-destructive dodging and burning. If you make a new transparent layer, just hit that little plus sign, there's a new transparent layer. Dodging and burning could be done in a blending mode. If I pop this into soft light and clip it to the layer below, just so it doesn't accidentally affect the grout. Remember, there's a few ways we can clip. We could right click and create clipping mask, or we could, if you hold the Option or Alt key, notice when you hover over this little line in between the two layers here, when you hover over that line with the Option key or the Alt key, you see that little arrow appear. And when you click, boink, it clips it to the layer below. So now we don't have to worry about this soft light dodge and burn layer affecting the grout. It's only going to affect the bricks. So I'll grab a paintbrush or B on the keyboard and I'm going to do a fairly soft edge. If you do too hard of an edge on something like this, um, that's pretty noticeable. Um, I made sure that I have pure black and pure white. You can either hit this little icon here, that will give you your default colors, or you can hit D on the keyboard. Uh, that gives you your black as the foreground and white as the background. So if you paint with black, I get a bit of a softer brush there. We can darken one of these. Also notice I've got my opacity turned down a little bit. Here I am at around 30%. If you want to hit it a little more intensely, you can bring up the opacity. Let's say I hit five on the keyboard. Oh, that darkens it even more. If I hit zero on the keyboard, it makes it really dark. And if you want to lighten one up, if you hit X on the keyboard, notice that reverses your foreground and background colors. So with white, you're around 50%, I could lighten some of the bricks. Uh, so give that a try. Do a little bit of randomness, a little bit of lightening and darkening. Make it look a little bit more convincing, a little bit more real. Give you some time to do that. Um, and if you hit it twice, you can give it a little bit... Oh no, I went over the edge there. Uh, if something like this happens, if you hit E on the keyboard, you'll temporarily get the Eraser tool. A nice soft edge, and you can simply erase that off the edge of the neighboring brick. B will get you back to your paintbrush, and you can continue lightening and darkening as you see fit. Okay, that's looking nice and random bricky sort of pattern. What else do we have here? Use your brick wall that you've just created to make a fireplace. Well, that's rather non-specific. You can create your own fire or you can use the file provided in the folder called flame. Interesting. All right, well, let's save up this brick wall here. Save that up as a layered PSD file and we'll be ready for the next step.